Okay, the second project is going to be uh, how to use linear models to approximate uh, living systems. And we're going to look at in particular populations of a particular species. And we'll go over that idea. So we'll first talk about uh, compartmental models. What does it mean to be a, uh, divide up a population in terms of different groups? We'll talk about how we express the state of a system. And we'll talk about how individuals within the system can transition between different states. And then finally, we'll go through and do an example for elephants. Uh, we're going to be using a mathematical model here to try to approximate some system describing a sp species of animals. It's important to recognize a, first, a few things. First, this is just going to be an approximation. Uh, it's not going to be exact. It may not even be close to being exact, but hopefully it'll capture the dynamics. We're not trying to get it dead on, but what we're trying to do is get insight into what's going on here and get close enough to know when does the population grow, when does it die out, and what, how do the interactions within the group affect the larger dynamic. And in doing so, we're going to go through and explore all the different options we have and look at the different factors and try to understand which factor has the biggest impact on the system as a whole. There's a lot of different models. Uh, and this is uh, not exhaustive and it's not necessarily accurate in that you can have combinations of these things. But you can think of models in different ways. One way is that it's a deterministic. So this means that once you set it in motion, everything is uh, going to happen the way it's going to happen and all the dynamics are set. Uh, this can be done in a discrete format in the sense that you have a discrete number of animals or discrete uh, things that you're looking at, or a discrete set of times, or it can be continuous. And the example we're going to use, a look at, it's going to be continuous in the sense that the densities of animals can take on any number, but the time is going to be broken up into, into discrete time. So we're going to be looking at a combination of these things, where it's going to be discrete in time, and it's going to be continuous in terms of the population. And we're going to be doing that by looking at the density of animals in a given area. Uh, we can have a stochastic model where there's probabilis probabilities that certain things happen. And again, you can have discrete probabilities or continuous probabilities. And this can be divided up into uh, time and populations that could be either discrete or continuous. And you could have agent-based models where you keep track of individuals and you have rules that you keep track of and apply to the different individuals in your simulations. Oftentimes these are compartmental, but the nice thing about agent-based systems is you can compartmentalize in space as well as time. And it's very similar, it's very um, common to do many, many simulations of these things because they're oftentimes stochastic in nature, which means that each time you run it, you'll get a different number. And you take many simulations and try to make uh, approximations to the means and the uh, other statistical uh, parameters associated with the populations. Okay, so for compartmental models, the idea is this. If you want to divide um, the things you're tracking into different groups, uh, in particular, the examples we're going to be looking at, the groups that we're going to use are going to be stages, and these are going to be life stages. So the, uh, as the animals move through different stages in their lifetimes, we're going to keep track of how many animals or what's the density of animals in these different uh, stages. So a common thing for mammals is you'd have uh, like infants. Infants go on to grow up to be juveniles. Juveniles grow up to be adolescents. And ad adolescents grow up to be adults. And you keep track of the numbers of animals in each of these groups, keeping in mind that infants grow up to become juveniles. Juveniles uh, grow up to become adolescents and adolescents grow up to be adults. And as you go through your different time periods, you keep track of the transitions of the animals between these different groups. So we would, for example, make keep track of the number of infants in a population. And again, this is going to be a density. So these could take on any number um, because you're dividing by the area or some kind of unit area. So we could keep track of the number of infants in a, a population of animals. We could then keep track of the number of juveniles in a group of animals. Keep track of a group of, or the number of adolescents, I should say the density of adolescents, 
and the density of adults, keeping in mind, again, that the infants are going to grow up to be juveniles. The juveniles can grow up to be adolescents, but uh, oftentimes what happens is that the uh, it takes much longer for an animal to graduate from juvenile to adolescent than it does from infant to juvenile. So some of these animals stay in this group. Same thing with adolescents. This can take a long time. So some percentage are going to go on to become adults, but many are going to uh, stay in the adolescent group as you go from time period to time period to time period. And you have to figure out what is the time period you're going to use or what's the unit time. And what we're going to be doing in this particular case is we're going to looking at uh, the time in terms of how long does it take an infant to grow into being a juvenile. So if that's the case, we don't necessarily have to worry about uh, infants staying in this class as we go from time period to time period. So for our model, we'll have initial time. In this initial time, we're going to keep track of the density of infants, density of juveniles, density of adolescents, and density of adults. And then given this density, we're going to go to the next time. And what happens is that uh, you'll have, oftentimes you'll have some percentage stay as infants, but we're going to uh, fix this so that we don't necessarily wor worry about that. And then some percentage go on to become juveniles. Same thing with the juveniles. Some percentage remain juveniles. And then some grow up to become adolescents. And then for the adolescents, some percentage uh, remain adolescents and some become adults. And then as you go from year to year, the adults stay in this class and you're going to have, or some percentage stay in the class, and you're, you're going to have, uh, in every one of these groups, some percentage is not going to survive. And you can then, once you figure out those rules that take you from time zero to time one, you then apply the same rules as you go from time one to time two, time two to time three, and just keep this up. And you use these same rules that help you figure out how these transitions occur. So we're going to need to keep track of the system and the number of animals in the system. And we're going to call the number of animals, or actually, again, i got to be careful, this is the density of animals. We're going to call this the state of the system. So at some given time period, the kth time period, we'll have the density of infants, def density of juveniles, density of adolescents, and the density of adults. So we could call this the infants, juveniles, adolescents, we'll call those G for grown-up. Right? And the notation we're going to use is where I put the K there. And if we talk about these individual values here on their own, then we'll put the K there just to try to avoid confusion and make sure we understand that this is going to be, for example, the number or the density of adolescents at a given time level K. Right? So we've got to be careful these things change in time, and they're going to be these densities. Once, If you know the number of density of infants, juveniles, adolescents, and adults, that tells you the state of the system you're keeping track of. Okay. And as we go from one time span to the next, so the next time span is going to depend on the previous time span, and we're going to have some function that takes that previous time span and gives us this. So this is going to be a deterministic model in the sense that if you know the past population, you can automatically determine the future population. Uh, now, oftentimes what happens is this is going to be nonlinear and very complicated. Uh, we're going to look at an easier approximation, and we're going to use a linear tr uh, transformation here for this, which gives you can give you good or OK uh, approximations for what you're looking at. Um, but this is where we're going to start. So again, just in terms of another way to look at this is we've got some number of infants. We're going to choose our time span so that over a given time span, all the infants graduate to the juvenile class. And then the juveniles, have, as we go to the next time span, some percentage become adolescents and uh, some percentage remain in the class. For the adolescents, some percentages uh, this are going to graduate and go to the adult class. Some percentage is going to remain in the adolescent class. And then for the adults, some percentage is going to remain 
in here. That whoever survives is going to remain in this class. But the adults are going to uh, give us a new set of infants in this next generation. So over this next year, we'll have some new uh, infants enter in, and those are all going to come through the adult class. So if we think about this in terms of the equations, the density of infants at the next time step is going to be some fraction of the number of adults. Oops, this should be a, a G. Sorry about that. So that actually should be a G. The number of juveniles in the next time step is going to be some percentage of the infants plus the percentage of juveniles that remain. At the next time step, the number of adolescents is going to be the, uh, some percentage of the uh, juveniles that graduate into the adolescent stage, plus the percentage that remain in the adolescent stage. And finally, for the grown-ups, you're going to have some percentage of the adolescents become adults, and then there's going to be the percentage that remain in here or survive as you go from year to year. Okay? And so now if I think about this as a vector, right, so my vector here, this is going to be my EK, oops, sorry, I'm going to call this SK plus 1, is going to be, keep track of the first entry is going to be the number of uh, infants, number of seconds is going to be the number of juveniles, then adolescents, and then adults. Okay, so we have here now that our SK plus 1 is going to equal some matrix, let's call it A just for kicks, times SK. And what do we have? We have the number or the density of infants in the next uh, time span is going to be some fraction of the number of adults in the group. The number of juveniles is going to be whoever graduates from the infant class plus whoever remains in the juvenile class. The number of adults or density of adults is going to be the percentage of juveniles who graduate plus the percentage of adolescents that remain. And then finally for the grown-ups, it's going to be the percentage of adolescents that graduate plus the percentage of grown-ups that remain. And so now this matrix right here is going to define our linear transformation. So if I can think of this as some T of SK, and this is the matrix associated with that linear transformation.